Let's plug in this USB MIDI keyboard and build a simple polyphonic synth. Along the way, we're going to learn some really useful MSP techniques. A note in object has three outlets, pitch, velocity, and channel, but we'll use only the first two, packing the pitch and velocity together into a two element list. By hooking up the output of pack to the right inlet of a message box, we can see the incoming messages. As I play the keyboard, I see notes beginning and ending. In max, a note off is indicated by a velocity of zero. Any non-zero velocity is a note on. We'll soon see how keeping pitch and velocity together as a list will be useful. So let's leave the pack in the patch, but add an unpack directly afterwards, which creates a single patch chord for note messages. But on to more interesting things. Let's take the MIDI pitch and convert it to frequency by using the M to F object. So for example, a MIDI pitch of 69, the note A, corresponds to a frequency of 440 hertz. Next, we add a synthesis module of some kind, like this saw tilde object, which makes a good sounding sawtooth wave. The problem now is that the sawtooth wave is sounding all the time. Notes have no beginning or end. We need to add an amplitude envelope. For this purpose, there is a very useful object named ADSR tilde. ADSR stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain, Release. Here's a graph showing time in milliseconds and amplitude from 0 to 1. Attack is the time it takes the envelope to go from 0 to 1 at the beginning of the note. Decay is the time it then takes to fade down to a sustain value. Sustain being a measure of amplitude, not time. Finally, release is the time for the end of the note to fade to zero. When we press the key down, the attack begins, followed by decay and sustain. When we release the key, the release begins. Incoming MIDI velocity normally ranges from zero to 127. We scale it to go from zero to one. The left outlet of ADSR tilde outputs the resulting amplitude values as an audio signal, which we can multiply times the output of the oscillator to produce an amplitude envelope. Now it sounds like a real monophonic synthesizer. To make the synth polyphonic, we're going to have to duplicate this voice. Let's select the main part of the patch and choose Edit Encapsulate. The result is that part of the patch is now an editable subpatcher. Since we're happy with the patcher so far, and since we want to make a lot of these, let's save the subpatcher as a patcher in its own right. In other words, a new Max document, something we call an abstraction. We'll name it synth underscore voice. Since both the main patcher and the new abstraction are on the desktop, Max can find the abstraction. So we can just type its name into an object box and it will load. But this is still not polyphony. Even if we copy several of these abstractions and mix their outputs together, we'll need a system to manage incoming notes and decide which voice will play which note. The easiest technique for this is to use poly tilde. By simply typing poly tilde before the name of the abstraction, we get a poly tilde object with the abstraction inside. To create more voices, we add a second argument which is the number of voices. So now poly tilde has 16 copies of this abstraction inside. Note, however, that the synth is still monophonic and we've lost the outlet too. So we've got a bit more work to do. In order to use poly tilde's note management system, we add the word MIDI note before each pitch velocity list. Prepend does this job. And while we're here, let's enable voice dealing with this attribute. In other words, if we play so many notes that we actually run out of notes, poly tilde will automatically terminate the oldest notes to make voices available for the new ones. Double clicking the poly tilde reveals the first copy of the synth underscore voice abstraction. Option clicking on the window title bar opens the original patcher so we can make changes. The first thing we have to do is replace the ordinary inlets and outlets with special ones for use with poly tilde. They're in, out, in tilde, and out tilde. 
The object in one replaces the first inlet for max messages. The object out tilde one replaces the first outlet for audio signals. After saving this new version, we see the outlet reappear. Let's hook it up and try it out. Still only one voice. There's one more object to add. This poly tilde is an object that works only inside of poly tilde, and it manages communication between each voice and the poly tilde object itself. If we send this poly tilde a number or audio signal, which is zero, then the poly tilde knows that the voice is not playing. It's available. Non-zero, the voice is busy, and poly tilde will try to choose another voice. Conveniently, when the voice is not busy, its amplitude envelope will be zero. When the voice is playing, its amplitude envelope will be non-zero. So let's just connect the left outlet of ADSR tilde to this poly tilde and save. Polyphony, we've done it. Well, not so fast. Note that when we hear several voices playing at once, the combined output is so loud that we get distortion. So now is a great time to add a gain tilde object to poly tilde's output. Now let's take care of two more details in order to really refine our synth. First of all, if we connect ADSR tilde's third outlet to this poly tilde, this poly tilde will receive mute one and mute zero messages, which mean that when the voice is not playing, its local signal processing, or DSP, is turned off. This is obviously quite useful in managing the overall performance of our patch. Secondly, there is something a bit more tricky to consider. If we force voice stealing, poly tilde will stop the voices playing old notes so that they can be used to play the new notes. It does so by sending the voices a note off immediately followed by a note on. The note off will cause ADSR tilde to begin its release fade out, but before it can get to zero, the new note on arrives. ADSR tilde is smart enough to cut its losses and quickly fade to zero, which only takes 10 milliseconds by default. Then the new note is played. This is one of the best aspects of ADSR tilde since it prevents clicks. The moment when the output of the voice is zero is also the perfect time to change the frequency of the oscillator and change other parameters of the patch. At that moment, ADSR tilde's second outlet which is an audio signal, makes a transition from zero to one. By attaching an edge tilde object, we get a bang when this happens. So let's store the frequency information until that bang arrives. We'll replace our unpack with a swap and then cross the patch chords. That reverses pitch and velocity twice. So in the end, the pitch is still on the left and the velocity is on the right. However, it also means that pitch leaves the right outlet of swap which means that it arrives first. The pitch is converted to frequency and then stored in a float object. By sending it to the float object's right inlet, the number waits until a bang arrives in the left inlet. And that bang arrives from edge tilde at the precise moment that the voice's output is zero. There you have it. Everything you need to know to build a clean, robust polyphonic synth. Remember that our little sound module, the saw tilde object, can be replaced by whatever sound generating patch you want, even some huge thing.